This is the sound of Pacific chorus frogs. In the Willamette Valley, we hear them primarily in late winter and spring. The chorus often starts at sunset, but is sometimes heard during daylight hours. The Pacific chorus frog is also known as the Pacific tree frog. These cute tiny frogs have bulging eyes, little feet, and each toe has a round pad at the tip. They are often green or brown and have dark eye stripes, but the color varies and I'll tell you more about that later. Late winter and through the spring is their breeding season, hence the loud choruses. They mate and lay eggs in lakes, ponds, slow-moving streams, shallow bodies of water, flooded fields, ditches, and more. The length and time of the year of their breeding season varies depending on elevation and latitude. Only males can call, and they ribbit to attract females. So when you hear a lot of frogs, remember that the female portion of the population remains silent. Males make another non-breeding call, which is a simple croak. In the Willamette Valley, we have two common frog species, the Pacific chorus frog and the non-native American bullfrog. Bullfrogs make a bellowing call. The native red-legged frog is uncommon and calls primarily while submerged. This is seldom heard because it's very quiet. Pacific chorus frogs are native to western North America, from British Columbia to Baja California and as far east as Nevada and parts of Idaho. Some resources have divided this range into three separate species consisting of the Northern Pacific, Sierra, and Baja California chorus frogs. This species split remains controversial and has not been accepted by all taxonomists. Their ribbit call is familiar the world over because these frogs are common in Hollywood, California. This is where sound engineers in the entertainment industry have captured the sound of the local frog and put it in just about every movie and TV show whenever and wherever frogs are depicted. Apparently, it never mattered to TV and movie producers that no other common frog in the world makes a ribbit sound like our Pacific chorus frog. Pacific chorus frogs are up to two inches long. Color and pattern varies between individuals and regionally, but shades of green and brown are common, and many have dark spots. They all have a solid stripe through each eye that extends from the nostril to the shoulder. Some overall variants are gray, cream colored or almost black and some have no spotted pattern. Many have a dark spot between the eyes that's either a triangle, Y, or T-shape. They have a limited ability to change their skin color. It has been observed that at least some individuals can change the tone or hue of their base color, but their eye stripes remain unchanged. Exactly why they do it and how this process works is still being studied. They are often called tree frogs, but they spend most of their time near the ground. With the help of their little toe pads, they can climb vegetation to pursue prey. Adults eat a variety of invertebrates, including flying insects, which they catch with their sticky tongues. Tadpoles eat things like algae, bacteria, and protozoa. To escape harsh conditions, they can climb into rock crevices, animal burrows, buildings, flower pots, or other hiding spots. If they want to leave the place where they hatch, they can cross the land, primarily at night, during the coldest weather, they will seek cover in moist, low-lying areas. They can remain temporarily inactive and can even hibernate for longer periods. They have a limited ability to resist freezing damage by raising the glucose levels in their bodies. During the dry heat of summer, they will similarly remain inactive until rains return. They lay gelatinous egg masses containing a dozen eggs or more, often attached to submerged vegetation and they hatch into tiny tadpoles. The frogs have a short breeding cycle, and it's possible for there to be two or more broods in a year, depending on environmental conditions or food availability. 
They breed in lakes, ponds, and slow-moving streams, but thrive in temporary wetlands or pools that dry up in summer where bullfrogs and fish, some of their main predators, cannot live. However, garter snakes, herons, raccoons, and other land predators will take some. This is why they often hide during the day. While calling, they will immediately stop if they detect movement nearby. You can watch them ribbiting at night with a flashlight and some patience, but you may need waterproof boots. Binoculars are also helpful. After sunset, slowly and deliberately approach a pool where you often hear frogs. They may stop calling as you approach, but if you wait 5 to 15 minutes, they may start up again. Any given patch of frogs will spontaneously cycle between silence and calling. If they're silent, wait again for 5 to 15 minutes. They don't mind the bright light as long as you move the beam slowly and don't turn it on or off abruptly. It's good to have a companion with you. One person can hold the light while the other searches for frogs in the light beam with binoculars. You can take turns between the roles of light holder and searcher. Binoculars are helpful because the frogs are tiny and you may need to search a couple dozen feet away. Remember to stand still because they can detect movement through the ground or water. While walking to and from your chosen frog spot, it's a good idea to walk slowly and use the flashlight to avoid stepping on frogs. Avoid stepping into pools where frogs and eggs are likely to be.